Tammy Trier, TrierWomanist.com. I thought I'd bring you out here today. I've got some noisy goats here, so hopefully you can hear me okay. But um, we had our uh, first baby goats um, in January, and so we are finally able to uh, be milking our goats that we've been feeding for a year and a half. So I'm real excited. And um, the Mountain Man built this a while back. Uh, we had our breeders goats out here several times as loner goats while they were on vacation and um, this is just an amazing thing and something you definitely need to have um, because he's a welder and a MacGyver and a jack of all trades he chose to make this out of metal it's extremely heavy duty you could do the same thing out of wood but I wanted to show you this and then I'm also going to show you how to milk goats. I, we attempted that before but my videographer was inexperienced at the time and the weather wasn't so very nice, it was snowing that day. So I'm going to show you how to milk goats also and I'll be videotaping with the camera that uh, we're recording with right now and I will also be recording with my iPhone um, with this head cam strap. Um, my iPhone will fit in here. This is also designed that you can put cameras, small cameras like our Canon Elf in here um, and strap it to your head. It's got um, like a rubbery uh, material, almost like a glue in here so that it sticks to your hat, your head, whatever and is uh, adjustable. So this is really cool. This is by Baku and um, I will have links to the company um, in the description and also on our website on the blog post that I will put out on this but this is a really cool tool because I would love to have the GoPro but I can't afford the GoPro right now so um, this is a great um, easy um, replacement until we have the funding um, and it may assist in some of our videoing that we do close up um, Sometimes, like today, I'm by myself videoing, so it tends, can be a struggle. Um, you won't be able to zoom in on some of the things I'm going to show you today, but I think you'll get the idea. And I will show you this further when, we, um, when I start milking the goats. So, bear with me here, and hopefully you can hear me. This was made for a metal dish, metal feed dish, that the breeders had. Um, our dish was smaller and didn't fit in here, and I didn't invest in another dish. We're real frugal and just improvise a lot. So what I did is just took um, thin wire and crisscrossed it so that I can put my bowl in here like so. So that's their feeding dish. Um, when you're milking goats, you want to have them preoccupied. So I have the littles out in the yard here. They can see them running around, and their feed is there, so they're pretty well distracted. This is really cool. This moves, and it has... Uh, six or seven holes here um, depending on the size of the goat. Our goats are small so I can put it in the very first hole um, and, and it's important to keep them secured. They will try to get out if their food bowl empties. Um, they will definitely be buggers and try to escape. Um, they're very smart animals so um, keep that in mind. So we uh, have a pin in here um, real easy to do this, you can again do this with wood, um, same thing, uh, it's nice and sturdy so there's a back on here so the goats don't fall off, they have a tendency to move while you're milking and walk around and occasionally this one here, if, I don't know if you can see her but Copper's out here, our Rhodesian and she tends to uh, stir things up a lot. It also has this really nice ramp, on the ramp there are two buys so that they have something to secure their feet. Um, as you can see, there's a roof on top of here, but it gets wet. Um, I was um, milking in snow and rain without that, so we got that in place. So, um, but that it makes it easy for them to get on. Um, you'll see how well we have them trained. Um, as far as I just open the door and they will just wander out on the stand and into position. So it's pretty cool. Um, it doesn't always work that way, and they don't always cooperate. Trust me, I could. I could have videoed a couple days ago and made a lot of money on that video, so, but we won't go into that. <laughs> but, um, so that's a stand. You definitely want a milk stand. Um, some other things you're going to want is your milking buckets. I have a little kid's brush here. You're going to need this to um, comb the loose hairs under their belly as well as on their, um, their teeth. So um, having a brush on hand is important. I have another dish that I bring out with soapy water and a sponge so I can wash them off good. And um, 
I have two different milk buckets, one that I put the milk in once I've milked them and the other one that I use to milk into. Um, it just makes it convenient. You're going to find and see when I'm milking that they are, they can be uh, uncooperative. And uh, so I tried to not take the chance of spilling all of my milk. So anyway, um, I will share further with you once I am ready to milk, but I wanted to show you the stand. Um, and express that again this is extremely heavy duty but you can make something similar out of wood um, I'm going to come back on the other side of the camera and just zoom in on certain spots so you can get a good idea how he did this um, but we are blessed with the goats um, like I said they um, birthed in uh, January so we had to wait about seven eight weeks um, and then weaned the babies off and started milking and I get over a gallon of milk a day and it is just rich creamy milk it's awesome I feel so good drinking the milk the mountain boy can drink the milk he's not able to have cow's milk um, but he is able to have goat's milk because the milk fat is different so if you have a cow's milk or dairy intolerance you may try uh, want to try goat's milk because most chances are you will be able to have it um, so it's been huge for us because I can make everything our cottage cheese our ranch dressings our milk kefir our um, cheese butter so all those things are now part of our homestead and just another uh, way that we're self-sufficient so um, keep that in mind and uh, let me step aside here and show you this a little bit better going to walk in here. Bear with me as I move around here, but you can see how he has the cotter pin in there. Um, you could even just use a bolt with a, a nut and just, you know, twist it around a little bit. Um, but you can see how he has that welded on there. Um, so if you did something with wood, you could do something similar. Um, but he's got this very, very well built. It's extremely sturdy and extremely heavy. The three of us need to move it when we move it. And, uh, as you can see how we put the two buys on there just makes it really nice and easy for them to get on one of our goats is uh, extremely um, non coordinated and the other one is uh, very coordinated and a climber so um, the one that's not coordinated struggles greatly so that helps a lot and uh, having that backboard is really important um, because like I said they do step around and you don't want them going off the one side and strangling themselves to death so um, and this makes a great stand also to secure them so that you can uh, clip their hooves which I will try to do in a video on that also and you can hear the littles see if they come out I see one there little what? What are you doing? Where's the other ones? There's licorice. Yo, what's up? And there's caramel. One more. Where's your brother or sister? But that's the littles. They are uh, four months, going on five months old. Um, they're a lot of fun. They are the funniest things in the world to watch. And uh, they're like little Houdini, so um, be prepared for quite a, an exciting ride when you uh, take on goats. Copper, stop biting the tripod. So anyway, I'm going to shut this off now, and uh, I'm going to shut this off now, and then I am going to uh, get some goats out here and show you how to milk, so stay tuned. All right, guys, I am back out here. I have my little water bucket over here on the ground and I have my feed bucket here which is a coffee can with a hole punched in it that I have hanging there. I have the milk bucket with another bucket inside there for milking and I'm going to go fetch a goat and show you how this goes and be prepared. Anything goes so. <laughs> underneath here real good. Get all the extra hair, loose hairs off so it doesn't fall in your milk bucket. Get your hind over there. Alright, I'll get you some feed. Alright. Get your head out of the bucket. There you go. Now she's a fast eater. She usually has a lot of milk. 
I have paper towels today, but uh, save yourself some money and uh, get a rag. I typically use a rag and then just wash it. Um, okay, this is an itty bitty bucket, but it works out really good um, because it's not too high. Now, I'm going to take this sponge and get up underneath here and really scrub her off. Okay. And then I'm going to move the camera really close. I decided not to use the um, head cam because my, ba my battery on my phone is dying. So I'm just going to do it like this. So bear with me here. All right, Miss Mert. All right, hopefully you guys will be able to see this. I'm going to try to stay out of the way. All right, now, let me just see. All right. What you do is you just wipe her off good. And what you want to do is you want to pull down on the udder to get a little bit of milk out of there. Um, that way you don't have any tainted milk going in your bucket. Now, bucket underneath. It's all right, girl. Okay, I'm going to just do one at a time. And you just pull down. You grab with your thumb and your pointer finger and you just pull down into the bucket. Do the same on the other side. Most likely, the goats are very finicky to the touch. One thing I recommend is when you get um, goats and they're little, continue to touch them all over. Touch their udders, touch them all the time, you know, all over their body so that they're easy to care for and take care of and then they'll be easy to milk because they won't be so sensitive to your touch. But you just keep pulling down like that. It's just a downward uh, pull and pull and pinch at the same time. And um, they, they do get sensitive sometimes. They do kick. If she's running out of feed, she'll get real spicy with me and start kicking. So I'm just going to keep milking here. Hopefully you can see that and got the idea on how to do this. But it's really easy. And um, the milk is phenomenal. I absolutely love the goat's milk. Um, some people say goat's milk is goaty tasting and smelling. It can be, but there's a way around that and a way to alleviate that from happening. And the trick to that is make sure that your milk gets cold. Flash freeze it, um, put an ice pack in your milk bucket when you're milking or just take it in and instantly transfer it to your container and into the refrigerator. But you want to get it cold as quickly as you can. Now, she's this is afternoon, so she doesn't have as much milk. Um, she's almost done. What you want to do is just tap. I know, I wouldn't like that either. Just tap a little bit, and that'll help drop the milk down if there's any still up in there. You want to be able to get all the milk out, because if you don't, they can get, um, oh, gosh, totally forgot what it's called. Um, starts with an M. Uh, but anyway, um, they can, they'll, their teats will get infected and cause them great struggles. Um, so keep that in mind. I'm going to just put this back here. I don't know. Hopefully you can still see everything. Oh, and look, the littles are all peeking through. They can smell the grain. Um, feeding your animals also is something you want to be really careful of. Making sure that you're getting um, good feed, non-GMO feed if possible, um, good, good hay. Beep. She's still eating. I'm going to take her out of here though and check. Again, I'm by myself so I want to make sure you're getting the full picture here. I'm going to bring the other goat out. The Myrtle, that was your day of fame. I'm going to go get Maud. So I just want to show you a little difference. Um, each goat has different teats. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Myrtle was kind of ready to jump ship because there wasn't any feet in the thing. But um, they're all just like people, built differently. Um, Myrtle's teeth um, are really tiny and her sacks get really, really full. So her teeth are actually jetting out in the morning, which makes it really tricky to milk trying to get it into the bucket. Um, so And they're harder to get a hold of. They can cause your hands to cramp up a little bit. So you know, it's something that you got to get used to. Uh, something I would suggest if you have never milked goats before and you suddenly have a whole pile of goats to milk is to be sure that you have just like stress balls and tension balls that you can get at the um, drug store. 
drugstore and or even on Amazon. Um, I would recommend strengthening your hands because it definitely is quite the challenge at times um, when you go from not milking to milking. I know you'd stick your head in there, wouldn't you, and just knock it over. No, you're you make it tough. Come here. going to bring this close again and just show you the difference in mod and sorry for all the movement here hopefully you guys can see this again and hopefully you can see the other okay again wipe it off and you want to squeeze some of the milk out and wipe that off just so you don't have any tainted milk in there and you see hers are so much longer same thing just grab at the top and pull down And it's definitely a process, so if you get, are planning to get goats, um, we got these girls as babies, and we were unable to breed them for a year um, you know, until they were old enough. So we fed them for a year, and then had to wait for them to uh, drop their young. So in essence, we've been feeding them for a year and a half just to look at them. We look at things a little differently on our homestead, and I would have, you know, it would have been nice to have just a mama milk goat, but it was also nice to have them from young up. So it depends how you look at it. I'm grateful that we are now milking and have a purpose for these goats, but um, you want to. Now they don't milk as much in the evening as they do during the day, or in the morning, I should say. We milk them twice a day. But it is, it's so nice having these goats and having the milk, and um, I lost my train of thought a few minutes ago there, but I wanted to um, just show you how to do this. I just wanted to show you how to do this so that if you get goats, you know, you are able. Um, what I was going to say before was that if you have not milk goats, what I would suggest that you do before you just go get goats is maybe go to a breeder and practice because you want to make sure that you can get the milk out of there. You can see she's all dry and there's not much left coming out. All right, all right, I'm not going to piss you off. All right, that is Maud. And she is finished being milked. So I dumped the milk in here. Um, the reason I do that is Myrtle is a, a kicker. And when she does that, sometimes her foot goes in the bucket of milk. And then I end up having to toss that whole bucket away because their feet are full of poop and just not a good deal. So I don't want to take chances, and that's just disgusting. So, you know, sometimes they'll just catch the edge or they'll tip it. But the thing is to be faster than they are, which can be tricky. Um, so, Maud, that was your time of fame. I'm going to get you out of here and take you back. But there you go, folks. I will shut this off in a little bit. Um, but thank you so much for joining us and joining me and following us. I would love to have you subscribe to our newsletter on our website. You can do so by going to treyerwilderness.com slash newsletter. 